I now understand why this boat looks so different inside. So first, second, third, helm position. Yeah. Interesting. What I really wanted to change on the current boat yes. was to have some more three-dimensional space inside the hulls. What? You did seven years of architecture <laughs> and then switched to naval architecture? <laughs> it's like a muscle man. <laughs> the muscle British. man? Okay. So like a muscular stance, like when you talk exactly. about muscle cars, like the big kind of low stance kind of... Uh, yeah. So like a muscle man with painted fingernails. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit weird, right? <laughs> okay. Welcome back to another episode Sailing Ruby Rose from Saigon Shipyard. Now, we are not on a boat. We are with Mui Yong Yi, who is the genius that I have been talking about for weeks. Welcome, Mui Yong. Thank you for welcoming me. Now, Mui Yong is the lead designer for the 1370s, and we have got some questions to ask her today. Thank you for taking those questions. So first, let me just jump into this. I'd like you to tell everyone, like firstly, tell us what you do, tell us your qualifications, and so how you ended up in Vietnam doing this work. So I used to live in Vietnam uh, mm -hmm. before, uh, and then I went to France overseas uh, to study naval architecture. Mm -hmm. Did you want to be a naval architect, or did you just go to France to become an architect and decide to go into naval architecture? What, what, was, the, what was the plan? So I was studying uh, architecture in France, in Paris, mm -hmm. and then I met these uh, teachers, and they were teaching naval architects, and mm -hmm. I was quite fascinated of it, uh, how they teach, the fact that it moves and you still have a lifestyle in it. So you move from traditional architecture to naval architecture. Yeah. Any regrets? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so the concept for the 1370, just tell me a brief overview of what your kind of broad strokes view was when you just started designing this boat. Every uh, shipyard has its own way of maneuvering boats. Mm -hmm. So I had to adapt to that theory. The sewing boats, uh, we have a very uh, protected helm in mm -hmm. the aft of the saloon yep. and uh, the interior designs had to emphasize that forward view, uh, that ergonomics that we can have in the helm. Position. So your design brief is really first and foremost protected helm. Would you say that's the most important yep. kind of like statement about the, the design for a sea wind boat or for the 1370 or both? Uh, both. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the number one thing that I had to uh, emphasize at first. Mm -hmm. And then the ergonomics in the hulls, um, the bed, the transversal bed, uh, which are also very traditional yes. uh, in sewing boats, okay. are also important, but it comes after that helm okay, so, for me. So first, second, third, helm position. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. That, that's something I actually never really understood, but okay. So first the helm position, then maintaining one bed that goes fore aft, one, tra one transverse bed. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you kind of like would were given as a design brief to talk about? Uh, what I really wanted to change uh, on the current boat yes. was to have some more three-dimensional space inside the hulls. Uh, like a, instead of having a flat wall liner, yeah. instead of having uh, three uh, walls, mm -hmm. um, for example, in the owner's cabin yes. on the bed, if we would layers like. Uh, different uh, wall liners mm -hmm. with different depth, with different width. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll make uh, the impression of the space more 3D dimensional and okay. more uh, rich in the details. Okay, so basically we're talking about small design uh, changes to actually just give it a better aesthetic and a great, uh, creating the illusion of space through using panels at different at different levels. Yep. And did you learn that from naval architecture or from traditional architecture, or is it a blend uh, of traditional architecture, naval architecture, and interior design? Uh, it was more from the architecture uh, when I first um, learned how to design the space in cool. the building architecture school. Uh, we already always needed some contents to compare. If you want something to look deeper, you, if you have something that is closest to you, yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. make their space deeper. How many years study did you do as a traditional architect? Oh, I studied seven years. I... What? You did seven years of architecture <laughs> yeah. and then switched to naval architecture? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So really, you've taken most of the skill set from interior design architecture and put it into naval architecture. Yeah. Which is now, I now understand why this boat looks so different inside. Thank yeah. you. Thank because, you. yeah, it's, you're not a naval architect traditionally. You are an architect that's gone into naval architecture. 
Super. Thank you. So the next question, the look of the 1370, it is very stylized. What was your inspiration for it all? I analyzed the shape of the boat, how the mm. Naval Architect Consort Belus yeah. uh, designed the boat first. Yep. Uh, because everything that is inside the boat has to align with the exterior, right? Yes. With, the, with how Frank Sao wanted to make it look, uh, make it balance the boat. Yeah. So it's, it's like a muscle man. <laughs> the boat. Muscle man, okay. If you see, if you see the front uh, shape of the boat, yep. you, you can a little bit compare with the man uh, okay. two arms. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was that impression. And I wanted to really uh, follow that uh, kind of design in the interior, sometimes uh, having the elegance uh, in the hulls, yeah. but also in the exterior of the boat. Uh, you really want to emphasize this angle shape more than straight lines, but also curved a little bit. So like a muscular stance, like when you talk exactly. about muscle cars yeah. in like the big kind of low stance kind of curve. Uh, yeah. But yeah. also very, very, uh, if you see the bows, it's uh, reverse and very fine. Yeah. Uh, in the front, which is quite um, very pointy. Um, to... So like a muscle man with painted fingernails. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit weird, right? <laughs> <I'm sorry about laughs> okay. I can have a strange image in my head. <laughs> so the next question, obviously this is a new project for you and you are the lead design on this. How is this project different to your previous projects? The way of working was very different uh, from my previous projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, before I worked for an interior designer, mm -hmm. so we would all work separately, which also gave to a very wonderful uh, results. Yeah. Uh, but in this um, case for 3070, it was very interesting how we could, how I could understand the system first. Yep. Uh, what kind of uh, system the boat should have, and that. From that, I could really use all space that we had in this limited space. Okay. When I first started the concept, I really worked closely with James Scanzella, yeah, the yeah, project yeah. manager, yeah. uh, because he would tell me, uh, we need to put this kind of system yes. there, that kind of system there. Because op often you need creativity, like, and where you get things that are designed by committee, yeah. you always end up like diluting. Like you see concept cars, I always see this. You see these beautiful concept cars and then when it goes to production it looks nothing like the concept so yeah no i see that so yeah having that design and not having to have your ideas diluted by another naval architect is probably why it looks so stylized now but also i take it what you're saying is that because you've got james at one end saying this is practically what needs to be involved so the practicality from one aspect but yet the design from yours and that's what gives you the final the final product yeah. That, that was exactly what uh, was <laughs> not, for, not trying to put words into your mouth. What have you enjoyed most about this? Because obviously now I'm sitting there looking at hole one, it is close to being finished. And I'm assuming that the last touches, the last kind of like all the fabric and all putting all that in is what is going to be like the, like the thing which you're really looking forward to from seeing the final product. But what have you looked forward to and what have you enjoyed the most about this so far? I really enjoyed to work uh, with uh, a lot of people uh -huh. uh, and most of them are are very experienced in boat building mm -hmm. uh, so I could use their knowledge um, to digest yeah. to my style and to create um, the interior designs what next for you what next for me I really would love to uh, design all kind of boats mm -hmm. that I could uh, from small sailing boats to super yacht yeah. my like ultimate goal would be to design the ergonomics in the racing boats. Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's just say, yeah, give <laughs> where, me this. Yeah, where everything should be uh, very justified because of the weight. Yes, yeah. Yeah, where weight saving becomes more important yeah. than actual the aesthetic. Yeah. No, I, I get that. That's going to be an interesting evolution because I do think that if we watch the America's Cup, that everything trickles down over years yeah. to make regular kind of like cruising sailors understand that weight uh weight saving is super important and they understand more and more now so you've got a whole team behind you yes we are now five in our design office uh we have three engineers and one naval architect we received this kind of um engineering plans mm -hmm. uh from our contractors and then Jung uh would be responsible to um 
translate them in the order of what the lamination department okay. needs to do. So to put it, to actually get a timeline that works. Yeah. Hello. So Tam uh, is our mechanical engineer. So he would, um, when we finish to design a composite part, he would design the tooling of it so that the uh, production team could build the plug and the mold uh, from it. Vin uh, has just joined us. Hello, Mr. Vin. He's um, helping Tam to do the toolings uh, and also Jung uh, to do all the lamination plans. Okay, fine, fine. So, so you he... just joined the company? Yeah. And voice? Rock, rock, boy. This is Mr. Viet, with whom I work the most uh, in this room. He would modelize the pipes, modelize all the tanks, every uh, little circuit that goes in the boat. Okay. Uh, so from that, uh, it's very useful for me to um, get every space that I could. So thank you, Mary. I hope you found that interesting. It is a little look behind the scenes at Naval Architecture. We did that whole series with Antoine back during COVID lockdown, but I really did want to bring this to you. So thank you so much, Mary. Thank you too. So when you see Ruby Rose 2 on the water, it is the beauty of that boat is thanks to Miriam. So. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for Thank you too. Oh, sorry, Mia and the team. She's super modest. Okay, listen. Hope you enjoyed that episode. I'll be back next week with another look at boat building in Saigon. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye. All right.